First of all, uh, take a look at this GTV chart on the Bloomberg because we are now seeing signs of perhaps yields uh, starting to gain ground a little bit, uh, at least uh, taking on this 50-day moving average when it comes to the 10-year yield. Uh, what are your expectations here, given that we still have yet to see, mind you, Congress's next round of fiscal stimulus measures, and what will that mean when it comes to rates and also its impact on other asset classes? You know, in the short term, it's certainly possible for rates to back up a little bit from here. But I think it's important to ask the question of where rates will be over the longer term. So over the next one to three years, if you look at it from a longer term perspective, we see rates really being well anchored. And, and the reason is really as follows. I mean, one, there are structural reasons behind why rates are this low. They're largely due to demographics, our aging population. We've seen lower productivity growth. And even things like inequality and low public investment has all contributed to our currently low structural rates. And so in the short term, could we see a reprieve? Certainly. But with 10-year yields above 1%, I'd be getting along. So what does this mean when you have U.S. rates this low and you have the valuation of these growth companies just soaring? Well, if you think about U.S. rates, it really sets prices for all asset classes, right? And when you look at equities, one of the key things that we do is to discount future cash flows. And with rates this low, it really means that we're assigning the same value to a dollar tomorrow as we are today. And so what has, that has done is it has shifted valuations in favor of growth companies. And so the question is, will this persist? And given our view that, yes, over the one to three year perspective, we do think that we're well anchored. We do think that they're like these school companies to garner the types of valuations that we've seen. Teresa, with the flood of liquidity that we're seeing, the lower cost of capital, does that also translate to just a lower cost of efficiency in terms of what sort of bang for your buck you're getting for this extraordinary monetary policy? Absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, if you can borrow for lower, it means that your required rate of return on that capital is also lower. And so that just translates typically to more zombie companies. So think about these companies that would have folded under a higher interest rate environment because their cost of capital would have been that much higher. But now they can muddle along with lower costs. And so this is where, you know, you have this classic value trap. And we think that those are the types of companies that are most susceptible, you know, to continual operational shocks from COVID. Do you expect broad-based dollar weakness to continue? Does that change depending on what happens in November? And who are the winners out of that in the Asian space? Yeah, that's the $10,000 question right now. We do think that the U.S. dollar will continue to weaken against developed currencies like the euro, um, Asian currencies like the Singaporean dollar. But we can't really say the same of all EM currencies. So investors shouldn't really see this recent bout of U.S. dollar weakness as risk on, right, where, you know, it, it's a tide that rises all boats. In, in fact, you know, we think that a fate of a lot of emerging market currencies will really depend on how quickly they can recover from COVID-19. Um, a lot of this will have to do with, you know, what are underlying structural factors. And so for countries that are dependent on things like tourism, it's going to be really difficult for them to recover, given um, that we're not seeing at the moment, you know, a viable vaccine or treatment. So at this point, we're underweight currencies of small frontier markets, and we're overweight the developed Asian currencies. And Teresa, just finally, of course, we're headed towards uh, Jackson Hole Symposium. We are expecting Chair Powell to discuss their long-term policy framework review. Here's our question of the day coming from M Live. What do bond traders fear most at Jackson Hole? I think it has been well broadcast that the Fed is willing to let inflation run higher for longer. And this is, has certainly been true, you know, even before COVID, when we were not able to really hit our 2% inflation target. And so that's what the market has been priced in. Now, it's going to be very difficult for us to imagine a scenario where the Fed will want to surprise the markets, right? The Fed really very much is providing a put. And they feel that this is a time when the economy really does need this, this extra arms. And so I, I think... 
if the Fed actually says something very different than what's currently priced in the market, it could certainly hurt the markets. But that's a very low probability at this point.